Hello friends, I'm Tim Wildsmith, and in this video, we're going to take a side-by-side -side look at two of the most premium Bibles available today, the Schuyler Quintel and the Cambridge Topaz. Okay, I'm excited about this one. You know, honestly, a lot of people have asked me since I started Bible Review Blog uh, whether they should go with a Schuyler Quintel or a Cambridge Topaz. And now that the Cambridge Topaz line is expanding, they started with the ESV, now they have the New King James Version, uh, KJV is coming out next, and they've told me, the folks at Cambridge Bibles have told me that they are working to get licensing for other translations to continue to expand the Topaz line. The Quintel from Schuyler has been around a little bit longer, and they make the, the full-size Quintel, I think in five translate, New American Standard, NIV, ESV, New King James, CSB. So there's five different translations available in the Quintel. They also have the Mini-Me, the little brother, which is the personal size Quintel in most of those translations. And now they've got the, the bigger, you know how sometimes you have the little brother who's actually bigger than you? That's what the wide margin Quintel is. They've got that in a couple translations, and I think they're going to be expanding that more. So, But when it comes to the, these, these main ones, which are about six inches by nine inches, two column reference Bibles, made with premium materials, uh, designed, both of them are designed with 2K Denmark, which is a very famous company that is known in the world of type settings. These are kind of the flagship, premier, uh, really boutique, and they're both designed custom from the ground up. These are um, type settings that Schuyler created, that Cambridge created. That's why I'm not putting a side-by-side -side in here with one of the Bibles from R.L. Allen. I love Allen Bibles. They are beautiful. They are premium. But Allen uses text blocks from other publishers and binds them with their methods. Or, or companies like um, Thomas Nelson and Zondervan and Crossway, they make great premium Bibles, but they don't make them in multiple translations. So, so these two Bibles are ones that you're going to be able to get in multiple translations. They are very premium. They are top of the line. And there's a lot to like about both of them. I love both of these Bibles for different reasons. But my whole point with Bible Review Blog is to try to help you find a Bible that's right for you. So as you're looking, what, what am I interested in when I study the Bible? What works for me? There's some very specific differences about these Bibles that I think are worth considering. So that's what I want to do today. Lay them out side by side, let you see both of them, um, and let you make a decision about which one of these you might be wanting to add to your Bible library. So as I go through this, if you have a question, leave it in the comments. I will get back to you and let you know if I missed something or if there's a question that you have based on this review. Definitely um, let me know about that and I'll get back to you. Also, if you would, like this video. That helps me reach other people. It helps people find this video and find the channel. And if you're interested and you like this kind of content, these videos about Bibles, then definitely consider subscribing to the channel. Okay, so here we go. This is the Schuyler Quintel and the Cambridge Topaz. Okay, let's start with a quick look at the boxes. The Cambridge they do these full color clamshell boxes with all this print and all the information on the outside of the box. Skylar takes a more streamlined, clean approach. It just says the name of the Bible on one side, their logo. It usually has their insignia on the top of the Bible, like this is the one, the Jerusalem cross on top of the box from my personal size can tell. I believe that's not on there because I have an edition that doesn't have that on the Bible. So this is the um, marbled mahogany calfskin ESV Quintel. And unlike this is my PSQ and goat skin, that's normally on most of their Bibles. That's kind of their, their emblem that they put on everything. It's called the Jerusalem cross. I really like it. But I got an edition that didn't have it on there, so I guess that's why they didn't put it on the box. But this is the uh, marbled mahogany calfskin, which Skylar has been doing recently. Um, it's still edge lined, so it's like a premium binding. Um, really, really beautiful, soft. This is the NKJV topaz from Cambridge in goatskin. Now, both of these companies use the Royal Youngblood in the Netherlands, which is a company that prints and binds their Bibles. So there's a lot of similarities. You notice on the outside that both of these have a perimeter stitch. On the spine of the Bible, they have raised spine hubs with Holy Bible, the translation, and then the company logo at the bottom. Uh, nice, thick ribbons on there. They both have art gilding that looks really nice. This is all done by the same company. They're both uh, edge lined and sewn text blocks. They're highly, uh, beautifully constructed. They're gonna last. The, the Schuyler Quintel has this gold gilt line around the edge. 
which the Topaz doesn't have, but they both have these really nice soft full leather liners. I mean, just really sharp from the outside, constructed well, so there's a lot of similarities. The big difference is most of the Skylers are gonna have that Jerusalem cross emblem, and the Topaz, they use the word Holy Bible here across the cover. So that's kind of the, 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 the look and the feel of everything from the outside. Very similar, high quality, very floppy. You definitely, I don't look at one of these and think one is nicer than the other from the outside. They're both very nice. So if you're looking for a high quality premium Bible, these are ones to check out. Now, getting to the inside is where things start to take a little bit of a turn. So both of these are designed um, with 2K Denmark, which is a typesetter that's very, very well known. I'm going to get over here to Esther um, and just kind of show you what these Bibles look like side by side. So a couple of differences you're gonna notice right away. One is that the Schuyler, it's, it's really, this is the big difference is, is how they format the text. And you have to think about which one of these makes more sense for you as you study the Bible. So the Schuyler is a two column text. So is the Topaz, the Schuyler Quintel uh, Cambridge Topaz. Two column text, but you see this one is the entire width of the page because they put all of the cross references and the textual notes down here at the bottom of the page. So that's everything down there, cross references. They use the red to accent that. Let's look at red real quick. They use red for the chapter numbers and they use red here at the top of the page. The Cambridge Topaz, they put the cross references in the outer margins and then the textual notes at the bottom of the page, also beneath a thin line like that. They use red for the verse numbers and the chapter numbers. They use a little bit of red accents up there in the, in the cross references. Um, so the, the big difference here is that this shrinks the text a little bit over here. So it's thinner columns of text, but you have your cross references out here, which I think if you're a big cross reference person, so if you're studying this part of the text, you just jump over here for your cross reference. Whereas if you're down over here in the Quintel, you're jumping down. If that bothers you, you might want to consider the Cambridge. If it doesn't bother you, then it's thinking about which one you like the look and the feel of better. The other thing about the Cambridge is that because they use the cross references, if there's only a few, like on this page, anything down below it is negative space, white space. So it does kind of turn into a little bit of a wide margin Bible, and you still have a little bit of a margin on the Quintel, but that's the main difference of the, the look and the feel on the page. You also notice that the Topaz is a verse by verse Bible. So every verse starts its own indented new paragraph. This is something that a lot often preachers, pastors really like as they're teaching because they can find their place really easily. Um, it's a very old school, traditional way of doing the Bible, the way the King James Version was done. Um, really nice look, but it's definitely different than this is a paragraph format Bible. So you don't have every verse indented on its new line. It kind of reads a little bit more smoothly, I would say, but it's, it's a different way of reading the Bible. So you have to think about it. Okay, do I want verse by verse? Do I prefer par paragraph format? Then consider the cross references and the textual notes and how they are on the page. You also notice that the, um, the just the overall look and feel of everything, the, the Topaz has like this more sans serif bolded font. It has a little bit more of a modern flair, I would say, whereas the Quintel, it's, while being modern, also has just kind of more of a classic traditional look all across the page. Now, the Quintel is an 11 point font. Let me see if I can get these up here next to one another. Whereas the, to that was very dangerous what I just did, like tossing that Bible in the air. The Topaz is a 10 point font. Now, not all Bible fonts, not all fonts are created the same. You can see those are very close. It's 11 on your left with the Quintel. It's 10 on the right with the Topaz. I would say that the, the Quintel reads just a little bit bigger. So if you're super concerned about um, font size, type size, which that's one of the biggest questions I get with Bible Review Blog. It's a little bit bigger over the Quintel than the Topaz, but not, not hugely different. So um, that's the main differences on the page. So they're both two columns. It's how they do the cross references, verse by verse versus paragraph, 11 point font versus a 10 point font. They're both on 28 GSM paper. Now Schuyler, because they're, they're, their line is a little bit wider. They do have some Quintels out there that were on 36 GSM paper. Um, I've kind of stuck with the 28. I had an ESV in 36 and I sold it to someone because I really liked the 28 because it was a little bit thinner with the 28 GSM paper, but both 28 GSM paper that feel really great, line match text. So the, the text on this side of the page is line matched with the text on the opposite side of this page. So you're not distracted by what you're reading, things like that. It just, it looks really great. It has a great look and feel to it. Um, the uh, poetry settings in 
the, the quintel, you get a more poetic type setting where there's line breaks and things like that, where with the verse by verse format of the topaz, you're not getting that sort of thing. That's what they've done in, so far in the ESV and the NKJV. So it just reads a little bit different. So you see this is breaking up the poetry and it kind of looks more like poetry when you're reading the sections of scripture. And when you go through all of the different books of prophecy and things like that, even in the New Testament, you realize there's a lot of poetry in the Bible juxtaposed with the paragraph format. Over here, it, everything looks exactly the same, so it's consistent throughout the entire topaz. But that's something to consider um, when you're reading the Bible. In the New Testament, now, uh, you have to check with Schuyler. Some of their quintels do have red-letter text. Some of them do not. So far, all of the topazes have used red-letter text for the words for Christ. That's the ESV and the NKJV. One thing I like is that they go to a black verse number when they have red-letter text, which I think is really sharp. Really great look and feel, but overall, it's pretty consistent. So if you are a red letter person, um, the, the, the topaz, that's all they've done so far. I think that's their plan moving forward. The quintel, you need to check on that. I think they typically are doing black letter text. At the back of the Bible, you do get a concordance at the end of Revelation here. Your table of wages and measures, your abbreviation, and then a concordance. So get back here to that in the topaz. So you see they're both three column text. It looks to me like the text is a little bit bigger. So whereas the, you get an 11 point font for the main text in the quintel and a 10 point in the topaz, it looks like the font is a little bit bigger in the topaz for the concordance, but they don't use any red accents. So you see over here, the quintel is using these red accents in the entries and the reference spots to kind of help you find your place a little bit easier versus the topaz, it's all black text, but it is a little bit bigger and probably spaced out, given a little bit more generous space. You see there's spaces between the entries, so that's something to consider um, as you're studying, if you're using the concordance a lot. At the back, you get for the Cambridge. Uh, the Cambridge topaz has these Cambridge Bible maps, really well-known Cambridge Bible maps, um, on a slightly thicker, glossier cardstock. For Schuyler, they use a, a coated... Bible paper that is thicker than the, the 28 GSM in the Bible, but it's not glossy. Um, I, I've always said that I think that Schuyler makes the best maps in the business, and, and Cambridge to me is a close second. I love the look and the feel of these just a little bit more. Now, some people are like, I don't really care what the, the, uh, what the maps look like in a Bible. For me, I'm thinking, wow, if I'm reading about David and, and going through the Old Testament and reading about the kingdom of Israel, I love to hop back here and see these maps and see these charts and kind of place myself. And it just helps me visually kind of think about and, and figure out the text as I'm, as I'm going through it. And I really, I really like that about this Bible. Um, I really like that about these maps. But they both have that. So you get indexes to the maps. The index comes after the maps in the Quintel. It comes before the maps in the Cambridge. At the end, you get a few pieces of cardstock in both Bibles, and then back to your leather linings and your back cover. So again, really beautiful Bibles. Both are great, very premium. The biggest difference is going to be about how those pages are formatted on the inside and which, which you prefer um, as, you look, as you look in there and decide which, how you're going to study the Bible. Do you want the cross-references in the margins or down below? Do you want a slightly larger font? Do you want a poetic typesetting? You just have to think about all those things as you go through these Bibles, but they're Similar in a lot of ways, but some very key differences. So there you have it, two beautiful Bibles, the Schuyler Quintel and the Cambridge Topaz. They have a lot of similarities, but they also have some pretty specific differences. People ask me, which one's my favorite? I love both of these Bibles for different reasons. I use both of these Bibles in my study time uh, at different, uh, different points along the way, and I really love both of them. I'm glad to have both of these in my Bible library. So I would love to know what you think. So leave me a comment. Let me know which one you prefer, what you like about one, what you like about the other, um, and maybe if you're going to buy one, let me know which one you decide you're going to go with. Speaking of buying them, I have links to where you can purchase these Bibles in the description. Anything else I mentioned in this video, check out the description. It's there. You can also visit BibleReviewBlog.com where I've got full write-ups of both of these Bibles. I've got uh, lots more photos and things like that. Check out Bible Review Blog on Instagram and Facebook. We have a great community there that's engaging and talking about the Bible and helping one another discover what Bibles are right for us. And again, if you wouldn't mind, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot of great video content coming out about the Bible very soon that you're going to want to check out. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.